joining me now for another Locked On Gators bonus episode. Um, we're, we're not recording this the same day, by the way. We, we've gone to bed multiple times. We've woken up. We just chose to wear the same thing to record this. Yeah. <laughs> um, is John Garcia, Sports Illustrated's Director of Football Recruiting and Locked On's Recruiting Insider. And before we talk 2024... I think LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Lockdown College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions apply. And John, we, we just talked about 2023, and that was a previous episode. And now we're talking 2024, kids, because it's quickly approaching. Like you mentioned yeah. last episode with Cormani McLean probably waiting till signing day or getting close to it. And that, that is, you said, two months and nine days from the time we're recording this, which is just, it, it's incredible how time is flying. But looking to 2024, TJ Capers is someone who, there's an early Florida-Miami battle, according to social media. I'm not the kid. I can't type, I can't say for him. But how does this feel this far out for two programs that have gone head to head a lot in the 2023 cycle? Yeah, it's it's rinse and repeat, right? Uh, hotly contested, very close, um, and and it's going to come down to the wire between these two. Other schools will get involved. Look, TJ is he's ferocious, man. He he could be one of the best pass rushers in the class independently, but he's also got some off ball experience that really turns your head at you know six two six three two hundred twenty five pounds or so. He, he can cover. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy what he can do at, at his size. So that's going to be a national battle. But look, he's not a well-traveled kid. He, despite having all these offers, he hadn't hit the trail and got to building relationships with a lot of coaching staffs as an underclassman. He's kind of just now starting to do that. Uh, so I do think that's good news for two brand new coaching staffs, right? The Gators and the Canes uh, in that regard. Now, look, he's a Columbus kid. Obviously, Mario Cristobal is a Columbus guy. Um, You know, so is a couple assistant coaches on that on that staff. Uh, So that's going to be something locally that is always a thing. But those kids, the reason that Mario Cristobal is there is because those kids haven't typically gone to Miami over the last decade or so, right? The guys that look optically like, hey, I mean, this is going to be tough for any other school to pull off here. So uh, other schools, because of that, have been able to come in and, and really uh, prioritize uh, these Dade and Broward County kids earlier in the process. And Florida's done so with Capers. Um, the SEC appeal is there. Uh, I think the utilization of these young linebackers that we, we were talking about uh, in the last episode is something that resonates with him. And he can do some of these same things. He is He's bigger than Shamar James, but he's not dissimilar in some of the things he can do uh, as a junior in high school. So I do think that uh, that's going to resonate with TJ as he continues to get up to Gainesville. I think he took one trip. He's planning another one here uh, before the end of the season. So, yeah, not a well-traveled kid, uh, a a no-brainer national recruit at a priority position to get after the passer. This has all the makings of of a huge swaying momentous type of recruitment and i think florida's doing uh, as good a job as anybody at this point uh, early in the process for capers but it, it is and we'll say that with all these guys for the most part today it is still very early right a lot can and will change in the recruitment of capers but because he is not this well-traveled i've experienced you know usc and texas and ohio state already kind of kid I do think that helps the the in-state schools kind of help to, to wall off, you know, when Georgia and Bama and, and these other schools come calling and begin prioritizing him as as soon as signing day gets here uh, in, in the 23 cycle in December. Yeah, and I mean, we've spoken ad nauseum about all, all the kids playing early, and there's another one that will almost definitely play early if he chooses to be a Florida Gator. That's Jarek Gibson, the running back, IMG kid, Mullen kid. Uh, I mean, right now you look at the Florida Gators running room and it's Montreal Johnson will be draft eligible by the time Jarek Gibson even gets there. Naquan Wright has been here forever. He will probably be gone by then. Trevor Etienne is playing. Trayon Webb is committed for the 2023 class. Chauncey Bowen's committed for 2024. What in the world does this situation even look like for Jared Gibson? And what would his commitment mean for this Gators class that, I mean, needs running backs for 2024? 
well, look, he's a hometown kid, right? He grew up in Gainesville, went up to Georgia to play some high school ball before making the move to IMG ahead of of last year. And, and that's part of the reason why he was committed to Dan Mullen and company. It was about going home and, and kind of putting on for his hometown. Obviously, coaching staff changed over and other schools were already involved with Jarek. So he decommits and, you know, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, everyone has jumped in on this kid. Uh, and understandably, yeah, right, this this could be the best running back in the country for 2024 uh, when, when all is said and done. And, and again, as you mentioned, he's at IMG, so that national profile exposes you as, as about as much as any school. Uh, so now he's kind of reset the process altogether. But Billy Napier and company have, you know, caught up. Uh, you know, I think at the beginning of the transition, I think we were there in January or February, and Jarek told us, yeah, you know, I hadn't really talked to them. I hadn't really talked to Billy and those guys yet, which was, again, from our standpoint, understandable, right? You're trying to finish out the class of 2023 and begin turning the page to 23, much less 24. So understandable, but optically not great, you know, to, to hear that with a form of verbal commitment. So in that time, other schools really made their move. Uh, so it really feels like a total reset of the process for Gibson. Now, I think he just released like a top 10. Florida's obviously in it, but but so are all the other heavy hitters that we've been talking about throughout this process. I think Texas is kind of a sleeper uh, in this recruitment uh, here going forward. So it's going to be a true national battle. I mean, we, we've talked about that with Capers and a bunch of guys in 2023, but we've also said, look, that's that's the type of battles the Gators need to win. And you've got an intrinsic advantage here. He was already committed once. He already thought he was playing college ball there. He's from Gainesville, my goodness. So you've got some built-in advantages here that you can rely on to stay in the race. And then as the reputation of that running back room matures, and by the way, it's been really strong here in 2022, right? I think we we look at Florida as a whole from a national perspective and say, well, maybe at or just under expectation. Well, well overall, yes, but the running back room in particular, really strong, diverse, unique, productive, consistent, all, all the things you want uh, from an SEC offense. So I do think that's still very attractive uh, to Jarek Gibson and will continue to be as as that matures for, between this year and next year. So he's he's in no rush. He's got a lot of visits ahead of him. He's an IMG kid, so he's he is going to be well-traveled sooner rather than later. So it's, it's going to be uh, kind of the opposite of capers. You're going to have to win – despite the local kid going national as opposed to the other way around. So I do think it will be a, a nice measuring stick type of recruitment for the Gators, but I do expect them to stay in it and stay near the forefront there on, until the very end. Yeah. He like just very recently released his top 10 or 12 or whatever it was. And I just want to say, I hate those tweets that are like breaking too, many. too, too yeah. many kids, too many teams. I mean, come on. 10 to 12 is too many. And also I hate the big like breaking four star or five star running back. Jared Gibson does this. And it's just a list of 14 schools. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, come on, man. Like I thought you were committing. I was getting ready for it. And then it's just like, there's, there's a billion schools and you have the whole sec on there. And it's like, okay, wonderful. Uh, that's not even Jared Gibson specifically, just those tweets. And that's general. us. That's more our fault, right? That's more the media and, uh, folks trying to, grab a couple extra uh, likes and retweets, but you know, uh, nature of the beast, I guess. Yeah. I mean, got to deal with it, but I, I still hate it. <laughs> the numbers don't lie in the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen simply safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At least simply safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. And I know this because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back. And I mean, I love it because I was on vacation one day, got a notification that someone was by my house. It was a false alarm. It was a kid getting a ball. But you know, the point remains, but because I was able to check in from my phone, see security cameras, I at least knew that I was protected. You can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash lockdown college. You save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown college to learn more. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. I mean, the Florida Gators against Eastern Washington were, I believe, is 39 and a half point favorites. Um, 
spoiler, they didn't cover that spread. Florida does not like covering the spread when they're favored to win. Uh, when, when they're projected to lose, they love it. They've been projected to lose twice this year. They covered the spread both times. They've been favored to win three times this year. They have not covered the spread. So as underdogs, bet Florida covered the spread. As favorites, bet against them. Fade them. Uh, simple as that. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. I've been using Bet Online for about six years now. It's got so much, not just football, baseball, basketball, soccer, hockey, tennis, table tennis, darts. Um, you can bet on horse racing. You can bet on anything you want with Bet Online. You can bet on politics, which, by the way, Brazilian election this week. So if you did bet on that, if you bet on Bolsonaro, congrats, because he's probably winning it. Um, but but there's that. You've got on reality TV, award shows, so much. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. It's where the game starts. I'm <laughs> flipping to the defensive side of the ball. There's 2024 linebacker slash edge at Darius Hayes. He's kind of listed differently depending on where you're looking at him. And I know things will probably change because he's still – a literal child, like he's going to change <laughs> as, as time goes on. And we spoke about this preseason with these edge guys and the linebackers guy and the linebackers mainly like Malik Bryant, where he's he's versatile. We'll say, yeah. How does that kind of play into this Florida defense? Which I mean, Brandon Cox Jr. thought of purely as a pass rusher. He drops into coverage. So how does yeah. that kind of play into a linebacker edge hybrid type looking at Florida? Yeah, it just it's it's just another tangible way to show what you want to do, uh, and I think Cox has has really uh, upped his his value from from a you know NFL perspective, certainly from from a college perspective. So he's a good case study in that regard. Um, Adarius Hayes is yeah six four six five, but he's like two fifteen, right? So he's he looks like a basketball player more than a football player uh, at this stage, but a ton of of time between now and when he does suit up. Uh, for for a college roster, uh, I think he's got a top eight, so not not as bad as a top ten or twelve. He's got a top eight that that has got Florida in there. Uh, look, Florida's been in, in in this race from the beginning. For those who don't know, Largo High School, it's it's a Clearwater Tampa suburb. So you know you're you're right there. You're right down I seventy five. You know from Gainesville. So he's been extremely um, frequent up there. Uh, I think he's already been to a game or two and he's going to get to another game or two. I think he'll be one of the billion kids visiting for LSU and and heck, why not? Those games are always kind of memorable and, and the Swamps atmosphere has been really uh, on 10 uh, th- this fall from from what I've gathered uh, from a television perspective. You you were at the Utah game, so you know it's it's been uh, kind of on another level. Uh, so I think recruits have been flocking there for a, a really good reason. And what's interesting about Hayes, beyond the, the skill set, right, P- pass rusher, but also some off-ball stuff, just like we said with Capers, um, there's not a lot of other schools in Florida that have a great shot. There's no Miami on this this top eight. There's no Florida State on this top eight UCF is in there. So I think that's interesting to a degree, uh, but this, this is not going to be one of those, Hey, you know, he's going to stay home and it's just a matter of which school uh, this one's going to have a, a more regional feel beyond the state of Florida. So for the Gators to kind of represent the state in that regard, no disrespect to Gus Malzahn and company, I do think is big early on here. And I think there's, there's a bit of a lean from a Darius at this stage. If, if he does start to accelerate the process and go, Hey, I got this top eight, but let's let's cut it again and then maybe commit, you know, on Christmas or before the new year, whatever it is. If he gets a little antsy there, I think that's great news for the Gators. Yeah, I think as it goes longer, other programs could start to, to maybe close the gap and make it a little more interesting. But at this stage, uh, it does feel like Florida's race to lose early on, which, again, we're, we're going to say with all these guys. Yeah, I, I have no problem saying that. I'm just like, hey, if they do come in, then. Perfect for us. Uh, one more player to talk about today, and five star name, Jarvis yeah. Boatwright Jr. Just absolute five star name. He's listed as six to one hundred and seventy five pounds. What is his evaluation like? What's his recruitment like? How does that size at that young of an age play into his evaluation and projecting him as saying, you know, he, he's still going to be a safety. He's going to move down to linebacker if he's big and. I mean, he's probably the same. He's not that far off from Darius Hayes' size right now. So we'll talk about guys like that. But how does that kind of play into it? And what's his recruitment been like? Well, I think you're seeing a theme, right? All these defensive players we're talking about versatile, right? What, what are they going to be tomorrow versus 
college level days. Uh, I think that's that's really interesting from from Billy Napier's perspective. But yeah, Boat Wright, uh, who also plays for a five star high school, right? The Tornadoes of Clearwater High School. So yeah, a lot of name game going on uh, when we talk about Boat Wright. But yeah, six two one seventy five, like you said, a guy who's played some linebacker, some safety, some corner, some offense, where he's been productive. Uh, I believe as a running back last year. This year he's playing a little bit of a receiver. So just does a little bit of everything for, for Clearwater High, uh, and I think that really opens the door for what he could be at the next level. So, yeah, if, if his frame continues to fill out, he could be one of these hybrids, right? A guy we talk about who maybe on first and second down is, is playing deep, is playing safety, and then on third down walks into the box, and he's helping you cover slot receivers and wall off tight ends and, and deal with these athletic running backs that can make plays in the passing game. You know, every – program needs players like that who can do something different on just about every down um, the ball skills are there the iq the instincts are really strong early on with this kid uh, so i do think that uh, that that's something to keep an eye on just on how his body develops right what if what if he's six three six four all of a sudden and now we're talking about an entirely different position so will be unique but his recruitment is starting to pick up too, right? Florida was in early, which I think is a really good job from, from their evaluation side of it. But other schools are starting to, to pop in there. I think Missouri was the last school to jump in with an offer uh, just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so his recruitment could balloon a little bit. But the difference between him and some of these guys we've talked about, particularly on defense today, this kid wants to go to Florida. This, this is a kid who grew up a Gator fan. When that offer came in, dream school was thrown out there. You know, th this is something that is a little bit more tangibly blue and orange as opposed to, to what we think with some of these other guys. So I do think, you know, more visits are on the way there. Um, now, he has said he's not going to pop as a junior. Uh, so I think we got to get, you know, beyond uh, the holiday season maybe for him before he starts focusing on potentially making a decision, but when we get to spring, spring evaluation period, he comes up for you know the spring game, spring practices. That's around the time of year where I think Boatwright uh, could get really close uh, to to going public with becoming a Gator. Doesn't mean in in those what six months or so, other programs can't get involved and, and really make it interesting. But again, we we talked about this with uh, Hayes at Largo. I mean Clearwater again, right down seventy five. The geography points that way. He has pointed that way. And his visits have been much more fre frequent to Florida than any other program. So, again, really uh, tangibly ahead at this stage of the game for a very intriguing defensive prospect. So I think the Gators have, once they turn the page to 24, they've done a really good job hitting the ground running with, with some of these in-state players uh, in particular. Yeah, I mean, 2022 kids are playing. 2023 class looks great and hopefully going to build upon that in 2024 but that's that's it for now i'm done talking about these kids right now this is john garcia sports illustrated's director of football recruiting and locked on's recruiting insider catch him on locked on gators apparently multiple times a week now catch him all yes, across the Locked On college channel and thank you so much john thanks for having me brand